Boundaries, a video for the whole program. Establishing boundaries is important to maintain emotionally and physically healthy relationships and empowers you to protect your self-respect and maintain your self-esteem. A lack of boundaries is like leaving the door to your home unlocked. Anyone, including unwelcome guests, can enter at will. On the other hand, having too rigid boundaries can lead to isolation, like living in a locked-up castle surrounded by a moat. No one can get in, and you can't get out. Boundaries are guidelines or limits that help you establish reasonable ways for other people to act around you and how you will respond when someone crosses the lines you have created. The easiest way to think about a boundary is a property line. We have all seen no trespassing signs, which send a clear message that if you violate the boundary, there will be a consequence. This type of boundary is easy to picture and understand because you can see the sign and the border it protects. Personal boundaries can be harder to define because the lines are invisible, can change, and are unique to each individual. Personal boundaries, just like the no trespassing sign, define where you end and others begin and are determined by the amount of physical and emotional space you allow between yourself and others. Personal boundaries are helpful and make it easier to determine what types of communication, interactions, and behaviors are acceptable and comfortable for you. Physical boundaries are like a band-aid protecting wounds from intruding bacteria. Physical boundaries involve your sense of personal space, sexual orientation, privacy, and your body, which are expressed by means of shelter, clothing, verbal instruction, and body language. An example of a verbal boundary would be if someone came to talk to you and was standing too close for your comfort, so you take a step backward, non-verbally indicating that they are too close and are crowding you. Having strong emotional boundaries is like having a shelter in the middle of a tornado. You have protection in place and you are able to prevent emotional harm. Examples of emotional boundary invasions include not being able to separate your feelings from your friends or partners and allowing their mood to dictate your feelings of happiness or sadness. Sacrificing your dreams, plans, and goals in order to please others in your life and not taking responsibility for your actions and feelings and blaming them on others. These examples seem unhealthy, right? So why do we let these things happen? What are we afraid of? Well, many people are afraid of fear of rejection and losing important people in their lives, fear of confrontation, feelings of guilt, having never been taught how to set healthy boundaries, and even safety concerns. Many times, people are not taught how to set healthy boundaries, and it is important to learn how and move forward even if you haven't been taught before. So how do you establish boundaries? Well, creating boundaries does not involve creating a brick wall to prevent your feelings and actions from crossing any lines, as well as ensuring the actions and feelings of others do not impact you negatively. However, setting boundaries does involve paying attention and being intentional. Here are a few strategies for establishing boundaries. Make sure that your boundaries are clear and to the point, avoiding rationalizing or apologizing for the boundaries you have established. Address that it, it is impossible to tend to other people's feelings and set a boundary. It is important to recognize this and decide which is more pressing at the time, your feelings or someone else's. Understand that timing is important. If you are not ready to set a boundary, it will be difficult. Once you do decide to set a boundary, prepare to follow through and practice what you preach and find a support system. Setting boundaries is not easy, and it will be helpful to have trustworthy people to turn to to discuss and practice your boundaries. Boundaries are meant to take care of you, not intended to control the people in your life. Here are three more things that will help uphold your self-regulation and psychological health. One, competence, the ability to do things effectively and efficiently. Two, autonomy, maintaining self-governance or personal initiative. And three, relatedness, personal connection and relationships with others. Relatedness is extremely relevant to the topic of relationships and boundaries as humans thrive in connection with others and relationships are one way we maintain positive mental wellness. It is important to remember that no one is an expert at relationships and all relationships are unique and have different challenges. No matter what the relationships in your life look like, remember to be intentional about acting and speaking in a way you are comfortable with and that feels good for you. I will leave you with a quote from Harriet Lerner. An intimate relationship is one in which neither party silences, sacrifices, or betrays the self, 
and each party expresses strength and vulnerability, weakness and competence in a balanced way. This video for the whole program has a lot of helpful information about boundaries, but it is not comprehensive. If you're looking for more information or resources, check out the resource page on the whole program website.